Hey there, y'all, Bunkle here. Hope you've been having a great day. Hope you've been having a blessed day. Hope every day is a blessed day for you and yours. So in this, I'm going to be opening up two jumbo, super jumbo, 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 jumbo packs. Two of them of 1987 Topps baseball, baseball cards. Yay. Now, these wood grain design cards, definitely a classic vintage baseball card design. Um, this is definitely, it's from the junk wax era. But I would also say that it's a set that's really, really loved. It's appreciated by many, many people and that are in the hobby, uh, especially long timers like me, um, that maybe they're, they they enjoyed this set. They enjoyed these cards when they first came out. I do remember ripping these packs, not necessarily the jumbo packs. Uh, jumbo packs were what we call Woolworth packs. Uh, Woolworths was a five and dime type store kind of like a department store back in the day long time gone um the old woolworth building is still kind of up in new york but i don't think it's called the woolworth building anymore i think it's called something else for historical purposes the woolworth building but either way so when these when these came out of course the highlight cards the cards that everybody was looking for were the barry bonds rookie and the mark mcguire what was considered by some to be his rookie. Of course, he had the card in the 85 set, uh, his Olympic card uh, that the hobby considered the rookie. But this is when he was actually truly being a major league player rookie. So if you're looking for value in these cards, of course, uh, there's billions of these cards out there. Uh, tops overprinted, again, junk wax era, vintage era, whatever you want to call it. I mean, they, it could be vintage junk wax era. Um, so in a in PSA 10, however, there are some cards that definitely have some value if you could find them and uh, get them slabbed in a PSA 10. Uh, perfect edges, perfect corners, perfect centering, and centering is definitely an issue uh, in anything from the 80s if and before that, of course. Uh, I mean, finding 1970s cards, uh, whether it's 74, 75, 6, 7, 8, finding perfectly centered cards from that generation and it, it's it's one in a million cards sure chances are a little bit better once you get to the 80s still nowhere as good so in a psa 10 there are definitely cards that have value the barry bonds again that was one of the big chase cards back when in a psa 10 um most recent sales price according to the psacard.com website psa website uh and they kind of track this i don't necessarily trust all of the prices the recent prices I, I suggest that if you go onto this site you take a look uh, for any card values or anything you make sure you you really click on the name you click on whatever grade you make sure the card because there's so many issues so many problems with their database it's not even funny I, I find it in every single set and it really makes me wonder sometimes as far as PSA's quality control I mean I'm I'm an IT. I'm I'm a tech. And if your data is bad, how good can the quality of your product be? But you know what? I, I guess everybody trusts them, so nobody cares about their data. Anyway, put all that to the side. The Barry Bonds, as I said, recent sale on that's 171.50. Then you have the Pirates Leaders, which also has Barry Bonds on it. That hasn't been sold recently, but the most recent sales price of that one was around 150. The checklist, checklist one, is also over 150. Um, lots of great stars that you could find in this. The Bo Jackson Future Stars. That was another card that we were definitely looking for, but nowhere, nowhere near as much as the Bonds and the Maguire. Those were the those were the hot cards. Uh, the Conseco, yeah, in some ways as well, I'd say, but not as much as the Maguire and the uh, and the Bonds. Um, the Daryl Strawberries, 125. Bo Jackson Future Stars that I just mentioned, that's around 125. Ed Lynch, <laughs> yeah, okay. It's probably the most valued thing in his entire career. Um, $125 on that card as well. The Mattingly Holds Value, the Nolan Ryan's over $120. Fernando Valenzuela, again, centering is a whole big thing on these. Now, there are varieties, okay, and uh, something to be on the lookout whenever you're going through 87s. The all-star cards. Some of them 
have a trademark by the All-Star, by the All-Star logo, by the National League or American League logo. Others don't. The Dwight Gooden, the Don Mattingly, those are two great examples. Now, the cards that have no trademark on the front, for those two players in particular, are a bit higher value than the ones that do have the trademark. Um, when I say a bit, the Dwight Gooden with no trademark is somewhere around 75 to 80 bucks. The Don Mattingly is also around the same price. Now, the difference between a PSA 10 and a PSA 9 on any of these cards, it's, it's immense. So that, that, I guess, is where the problem comes in. If you're going to be sending a card in for grading, it really has to be perfect. If uh, you come back and it's a PSA 9, um, I, I think the highest valued card, just again, looking at the PSA website, highest grade PSA 9 shows a Don Mattingly with no trademark on, on front. I'm going to take a look while I'm talking about it here. And I don't think that's a Mattingly card. No, that's not. Great example. If you take a look on the PSACard.com website for 1987 tops, if you look anytime, probably within the next who knows when it's going to take them to clean this up. Um, if you click on PSA for PSA 9 after you go into the 87 top set, it'll show you the highest value card is the Don Mattingly at $177. And it was sold March 7th. However, it's not. Unfortunately, this is just one of their screw-ups. It's a Kobe Bryant card. So wrong wrong sport, wrong year, wrong everything. So the true highest value PSA 9 card. Uh, and again, it would, it would be really interesting because the Mattingly no trademark on front and a PSA 10 doesn't even sell that high. So the next highest is the Tom Seaver in a PSA 9. And that's somewhere around 50 bucks. And that, that's, that's legit. Um, not many other cards are in that price value, in that price range. So, again, you really want to make sure it's a PSA 10. PSA 9, you're basically striking out unless you're getting a really good deal. Uh, if you're paying 10 bucks or 12 bucks, I think I saw a special earlier this year uh, through PSA, then maybe the Seaver, the Valenzuela, uh, Pete Rose, Will Clark, uh, Lou Whitaker, Harold Baines, uh, Ozzie Smith, Nolan Ryan, the Bo Jackson Future Stars, um, Sparky Anderson, uh, the Carlton Fisk. If you're getting if you're getting grading for fifteen bucks, maybe it's worth it. Okay, if the centering is just off slightly, I mean any other card you can't really afford not getting a ten on. Anyway, let's get ripping here. Now, these packs have gum. And as has become a habit of mine, I got my Wall of Fame all set up. And I got some wrappers on the side there. Let's take a look-see at this gum. Now, unfortunately, the gum is not in mint condition. It does look like it's cracked a bit. So we got some cracked gum. There we go. I got pack open. Now, these jumbo packs have 100 cards per pack. So, this is going to be a little while. Okay, I got my gum. And, say hello. And it turns to gum dust. It's not as crunchy as it usually is. Very powdery. I'm definitely going to need that cup of water in a second. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be choking on very old gum dust. 35, 36 year old gum dust. See, so, yeah, I got my cup. Okay. I think I've hacked down that gum. Starting off with Rick Mailer. Bad gum stain on his face. That card's going to go by the wayside. Got Jimmy Key. Great pitcher. Not great enough for the Hall of Fame, so not going on my Wall of Fame. Reed Nichols. Bryn Smith. Jeff Dedmon. Mike Davis. 
Rags Rigetti. Great, great pitcher. Starter reliever. Got Randy Myers. Junior Ortiz. Yeah, I know I skipped over one or two. You just feel like you're really thick there. Yep, you are. Got some stickage going on here. Look at that. Okay, there we go. It's weird that middle cards of this particular design are stuck together. Got Vita Blue. Just standing there, arms crossed. Lee Lacey. Tim Leary. Ooh, Donnie Baseball. Nice card there. Our Wall of Fame Donnie Baseball, that's for sure. Lifetime Yankee fan here. Chuck Carey. Bob Kipper. Bob Sebra, Kevin Seabass, Jim Clancy, Don Slot, Dave Dravecki, Kevin Romine, Tony Pena, Bob Forsh, Lance Parrish. Now, one thing I'll say is we have not seen a double yet in this pack. Many times in the jumbos, you'd find doubles. Uh, the sorting of these cards was also horrible. Wayne Krenchiki, Dan Petrie Dish, Glenn Hoffman. Teddy Higuera All-Star. Now, this is what I was talking about as far as the trademark. If you take a look, right there. You'll see that little TM. Okay, that's what the trademark is. So it's two little tin, teeny tiny itsy bitsy letters on the Gooden and the Mattingly. I think there's a couple other cards that are like that also, but those are the two big ones. All right, we got Steve Sachs. Ed Romero, George Kendrick, Steve Buscelli, Ed Wajna, Gary Carter. See it? the Gary Carter card? See a little trademark right there. Okay, I'm going to Wall of Fame Gary Carter. He's a Hall of Famer. Tom Candiotti. Ooh, which A's is that? Which one is that? Which one is that? That's not the one we're looking for. Dave Von Olin. Juan Bonilla. John McNamara, Wade Boggs, Hall of Famer there, Ed Wajna, Ed Vandenberg, Chris Chambliss, Jim Traber, Chico Walker, and Johnny Ray. So we got a couple frapperable cards in that first 50. Let me get those up on the wall. And now, sure, you know what? Don Mattingly's not Hall of Fame. He should be. I mean, uh, I've, I've heard arguments back and forth. In my opinion, he definitely should be. He was one of the dominant players of his time period, that's for sure. And, uh, I mean, you know, if he didn't wasn't always injured uh, as much as he was, and he put up a great career even though he was going through injury after injury, back injuries, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but he still put up a great career. Now, of course, people will point to the fact that he had no ring. He got no ring. Well, you know what? That that can't only be done by one player, unfortunately. I don't think one player does it for the team. And uh, George Steinbrenner was going through, I guess, a bit of a hissy fit in the 80s. I mean, he was definitely uh, getting every single player that was great, awesome, incredible from every other team. I mean, I do you think that he was going to buy, be buying out the entire league at one point? But for some reason, a lot of them just flopped in New York. Can't take the smell, can't take the noise. Got no money to move out. I guess I got no choice. Ricky Wright. Got Jim Beatty. Ron Oyster. Oyster. Mike Lacoste. Billy Sample. Hubie Brooks. Mike Schmidt, Hall of Famer there. Great third baseman. Ron Guidry, Gator card, nice. Kurt Ford, Juan Espino, Ron Darling. Come on, come on, Lego. Jack Howell, Dave Gumpert, Enos Cabell. And I'm sure as you're following along, you can see the centering of these cards is off on many of them, top to bottom or right to left. I mean, every once in a while, you'll see one that's perfect centering. And that one's probably commonly perfectly centered, unfortunately. Dale Murphy, badly centered. Curtis Wilkerson. Joe Hesketh. 
Argina Salazar, George Brett, Hall of Famer, Goose Gossage, nice. Doug Drabeck, not Hall of Famer, Jose Uribe. And Greg Nettles, great third baseman for the Yankees. Now he's with the Padres there. But I'd say one of the best third basemen that I could remember playing for the Yankees. I mean, somebody else could let me know otherwise, but uh, at least going back to the 70s, uh, 70s to now, he was the best that they had. Uh, sure, A-Rod was good, but he was he was a natural shortstop, and the whole thing between him and uh, him and Jeter and Jeter keeping the spot, you know, it it is what it is. Um, would A-Rod have been a better shortstop than Jeter there? Nobody knows. Sorry, there's no way to possibly tell. All right, we got... Davy Lopes, Cliff Speck, Ozzy Virgil, Mike Schmidt. Okay, I see the trademark up on top. Louis Aquino, Mitch Williams, Ed Vandenberg, Chris Chambliss, Jim Traber, Chico Walker. Oh, we saw a double. Got Tommy John, Don Ass, Dale Mahorsik, Rich Dotson, Lee Mazzilli. Future Yankees manager there, Storm Davis, Brian Dayette, and another Tommy John. One Tommy John surgery is not enough, go for another one. Floyd Rayford, Willie Wilson, Dave Bergman, Bill Campbell, and Bruno Tom Brunanski. All right, let's get the Mike Schmidt frappered up. Another all star card there. Not one of the ones we're looking for. And really badly centered. That top to bottom. He looks like he's about to float away. Alright, let's get the second pack open. And no, I will not be eating the gum from the second pack. Well, this one's probably better than the first one. Because, you know, it's all in one piece. But no. First one. And I hope it didn't do any damage to the edges of the cart. No. Came off really clean. I've seen a couple cases where it was kind of semi-stuck to the edge. And really just messes up a few cards at once instead of just one we got danny cox look i could say that dwight lowry marty barrett steve fire ovid alex trevino Candyman candelaria bill gullickson sweet lou Pinella. yeah no nah, <laughs> he was definitely a trashy manager randy bush got into his more than his fair share of scuffles that's for sure Bo Diaz, Chris Spire, Daryl Evans, Tom O'Malley, Joe Necro. Now, there's something with a Joe Necro card also. If I'm not, not sure if it's the Joe Necro or the Phil Necro. But one of the Necro cards has some kind of variation with the copyright or not copyright or something like that as well. I, I'm not sure. I, I'm going to keep that one on the side. I'll take a look-see for it later. Got Willie Upshaw, Rick Aguilera, Luis Quinones. Rock Reigns. All right. I will keep that one on the side. The Frapper. Ozzy Gigan. Jerry Naren. Gino Petrolli. Come on. Tom Needenfuhr. Doug Sisk. Eckersley. All right. Hall of Famer there. But my Wall of Fame, it's getting a little bit too crowded for Eck. Sorry, Eck. What the Eck? You sit down. Ray Quinones. Ron Karkovice. Gary Matthews, oh, I saw future stars there. Nope, 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 nope. Hold on, nope. We'll get the Tim Raines up on the wall. Complete the gap there and keep it moving with this one. Got Rudy Law, Roger Craig, Charlie Moore, Dave Kingman, hit or miss. John Morris, Carl Willis. <laughs> Funny pictures. Mike Morgan, Wayne Krenchiki, Petri Dish, Glenn Hoffman, Teddy Higuera, All-Star card. Rocket Roger, record breaker card there. Badly centered, he goes off to the pile. Dick Williams, Ron Davis, Twins leaders, John Cerruti, and Earl Weaver. Great manager with the Orioles there. And the last 50 cards of these two packs. 
definitely been fun. I just want to take a second while I'm open this to say thank y'all for subscribing, commenting, thumbs upping, watching, even just being here. I definitely appreciate all of y'all. All right. We are starting off with the rookie for John Morris. Now, this is one of the things in the jumbo packs that you can get in any of the other packs. Um, in rack packs, you got the uh, the all-star, the glossy all-star cards. In the jumbo packs, you got the rookies. You got Bob Kipper, Bob Sebra, Kevin Seabass again, Enos Cabell, Rafael Ramirez, Dawson, great card there. Rick Dempsey, Dave Anderson, Franklin Stubbs, Chuck Carey, Joel Davis, Paul Asimacher, Juan Samuel, Mike Easler, Jim Leland, Vance Law. All right, let's get Dawson wrapped up. And I got the last 25 to 30 cards from these two packs sitting there. Come on, come on, come on. Let's see. Yeah, I'll put Dawson next to Goose. All right, last, but hopefully not least, got Dennis Leonard, Marvell Wynn. There's still time to find one of the Bonds or McGuire or something of anything. Jeffrey Leonard, Mark Clear, Rick Burleson, Rupert Jones, Donnie Baylor, Tim Leary, Donnie Baseball again. All right, well, we got two Mattingleys. I'm not that upset, that's for sure. Doyle Alexander, White Sox leaders. At Lay Hammaker, Mike Lewind, Brad Havens, Moose Haas. The Phillies leaders, Bruce Hurst, Maury Wills, Turn Back the Clock, 1962. Cliff Johnson, Jack Morris, another Hall of Famer card there. I'm going to let him sit down with uh, Bly Levin, why not? Lance Parrish, Gary Renicky, we've got another Greg Nettles. Davy Lopes, Cliff Speck, what a name. You're a speck on a cliff. Ozzie Virgil, uh, Mike Schmidt, all-star card, another one. Okay, we got some duplicates going on. Luis Aquino, Jorge Orta, Jamie Moyer. Wow, he doesn't look 60 there. Ed Owine, Eddie Murray, all right, another Hall of Famer there. Dave Magadan, and Jose Cruz. So, let me get these three frappered up. Got the Wall of Fame pretty nicely stuffed there. I mean, considering it was 200 cards, I had, you know what, mediocre pull. Could have been better. Uh, centering on these was definitely a bit rough. If you look at that Schmidt as an example. I mean, he's not floating up and out as much as on the other one. You could see an, a very obvious difference there. But uh, definitely not the kind of quality you'd be looking for to send in for grading. And there goes our Donnie Baseball. So, got a nice packed wall of fame. I, I definitely say that that'd be a really good team. Um, might need a starting pitcher, though. Well, we could always pull Eck out of the pack when he was a starter. Or Rags when he was a starter. Might have a good team there. Anyway... Y'all take care, stay well, stay blessed, bonkle out.